everybody. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Chris and I'm really excited about today's video. I'm going to be talking about adding colorful or pattern or printed bags successfully to your collection. Uh, the reason that this video came about was because I was looking at my own bags and I realized I have this sort of subcategory of bags that are either printed, bright, patterned, and some of them were real successful additions to my collection and others definitely were not. So after thinking about it a little bit, I came up with four tips and, and guidelines to follow to make the addition of something that's a little bit out of the box for you successful so that you can wear it and use it and love it for many years. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, the first thing to think about is your wardrobe. Obviously, that's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, but in reality, if you are going to be buying a bag that is kind of colorful or patterned, you definitely want to make sure that it matches with at least three complete outfits that are in your wardrobe right now. Um, if you just go with, say, one, like if you see a, um, a bag that's going to go perfectly with the dress that you have in mind, uh, that's all well and good, but in actuality, you're probably not going to wear that dress more than once or twice a month or maybe even once or twice a season. And then if that bag only goes with that dress, it's going to be sitting on your shelf or in your closet and you're not going to get the use of, out of it. And you're going to feel like you got cheated a little bit, like you uh, didn't spend your money well. So you definitely want it to match with at least three things in your wardrobe. Now, if you're someone who wears lots of neutrals, maybe you dress in head to toe black or maybe uh, jeans and a white shirt is your uniform, then you're probably good to go because those are good neutrals and anything like that is really going to serve as a nice background for a bright pop of color or a pattern or a print. Adding a bag like that will definitely elevate your style and make your uh, outfit look a little more interesting and a little more stylish. On the other hand, if you're somebody that likes to dress in prints and patterns, then you definitely want to be more careful about buying a pattern or a printed bag because um, ultimately your goal is to make sure that your bag enhances your outfit and doesn't compete with it. So you want to be a little bit more thoughtful if you're someone who dresses in bright pins or patterns. Another thing to think of with your wardrobe is the season. Now, I live in the Northeast and we have a long winter, so I feel like from November all the way up until March, sometimes even into April if we have a really bad spring, uh, I am wearing a winter coat. So I've got a black winter coat on, jeans and boots, and that's pretty much a neutral palette. And any bag is gonna go with that. And in fact, if I add a bright, colorful bag to that outfit, it can uh, lift my spirits. You know, if I'm so sick of uh, dead trees and gray skies and snow, um, looking down at a bright yellow or a bright red bag can really lift your spirits. So that is um, definitely an easier way to incorporate color into your wardrobe. On the other hand, if you live in a warm climate, lucky you, or it's summer, uh, usually you're going to be dressing in brighter colors, prints, patterns, and uh, you definitely, again, want to be careful about the type of bag that you add to your collection because obviously you're not going to be able to match everything. For example, this blouse here, you can see is a bright print. It's a sheer blouse. I wear this in the summertime. I was carrying this bag yesterday, which is my Burberry Canterbury tote. And when I picked it up this morning, I realized that I cannot wear it with this blouse because basically it's a hot mess. So I had to put it down and I had to pick up something neutral and put all my belongings in the neutral bag because I didn't want it to clash with my blouse. So that's something to think about with respect to uh, making your bag and your outfit look really good. Okay, the second thing to uh, consider when you're adding a bag to your wardrobe is the style. If you're gonna go out on a limb or out of your comfort zone with a color or with a pattern or a print, then make sure that it is following the style that you like. And I'm a firm believer that most women really like or gravitate towards a specific style of bag. For example, I am a person who likes a medium-sized bag with a big open space inside. So most of my bags in my collection are just like that. I have, um, again, medium size open it up, it's a big open space, and that works for me. If you're someone who likes a big tote bag and you just love to stuff it full of everything, that's great. But if you're that tote bag lover and you fall in love with the Chanel mini flat bag in a bright red, it's a beautiful bag, but are you really going to get the use out of it? Probably, if you're reaching for a bag, you're going to find that that little tiny mini bag is not going to be successful for you. It just won't function 
the way you need it to function. And I've learned that the hard way over and over again. I've been collecting bags for, you know, 25 years. And I know that when you try to go out of your comfort zone or you try to downsize, a lot of times it can be very difficult and not really very successful. On the other hand, if you're someone who likes a wallet on chain or something minimal, definitely stick with that because ultimately you may not be really comfortable with the style or pattern. You're kind of like trying something out and trying to get out of your comfort zone. But if the style of the bag is something that functions for you, you're far more likely to use it. So make sure that you stick within your preferred style if you are buying a bright or colorful bag. Okay, the third thing to think about is the cost of the bag. Now, you've all heard the term investment bag. And really, in reality, there's, in my opinion, again, my opinion, there's really no such thing. There are bags that are very um, valuable, that continually increase in value. Usually they're bags like Birkins or Chanel's. And uh, if they're a classic bag that have been on the roster for a long time and the price increases with, you know, steadily season after season, then you might be able to buy a bag and get your money back if you sell it. But in general, most bags do not increase in value over time. And in fact, when you're using a bag and then you try to sell it, uh, almost always you're going to take a loss when you sell that bag. Um, and the reason for that, of course, is pretty practical is because most of the time when people are buying pre-owned or pre-loved bags, they're doing so because they want to save some money, right? So if you are that person who wants to buy that Chanel mini flat bag and then you find out that it's not going to work for you, uh, when you try to sell it, you will be able to sell it, but it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to get all of your money back you probably will have to take a loss. So just keep that in mind. When you're looking at the cost of the bag, make sure that you're spending an amount of money that you are readily able to spend and that you're not going to you know, harm your finances or anything uh, if you buy a bag that's too expensive because ultimately you're probably going to take a loss on it. I have a bag here, my um, Speedy bag, my Louis Vuitton Speedy bag I bought it 16 years ago for $680. Now, in reality, I could probably sell it for maybe about $600 or so. But remember, that's 16 years, and that's a very long time to hold on to a bag. So it's not like it's an investment. It's not like a CD or a money market account or anything like that. So just be wise about it. Make sure that you're not overspending when you are investing in a bag. And my final point is durability. So when you are buying a colorful bag, a lot of times the bright leathers, um, while they are very beautiful, and this one here is a Chloe bag, and you can see it's a, in a beautiful bright blue with cream on one side and brown on the other side. Um, you have to keep in mind that these colored leathers can be a little bit more delicate than your standard brown or black leathers, and that's because they undergo a dyeing process. And again, um, your designer handbags are going to have probably the best materials out there and the best dyeing process and tanning process and everything. But that doesn't mean that this color is gonna go all the way through the leather. So if my cat came along and scratched this bag, it is very likely that I would have two or three brown marks here because ultimately you can go through the layers of the leather that have the dye on it and you can actually go to the underside and those are scratches that are not easily going to come out. So if you buy a colored leather bag, make sure that you are treating it with some sort of a product and just make sure or be aware um, that things like scratches can happen. Uh, you may say, well, I don't have a cat or a dog. That's not an issue for me. But uh, a lot of times I find that these scratches happen and you don't even know how they happen. You could be leaving the subway and somebody who has studs or something sharp on her bag can brush up against you. And the next thing you know, you have scratches along your bag and you don't even know how they happen. So that's just some, something to keep in mind that bright colored leathers like this have a tendency to scratch a little bit more easily or at least show the scratches a little bit more easily. Uh, another thing to consider, and this is a particular material from Louis Vuitton, uh, you guys are probably familiar with it, this is the uh, monogram vernis. It is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful uh, lines that Louis Vuitton has. However, it is a very delicate uh, material and um, I learned that the hard way, hard way because I bought this because I was using a black bag that had a dark black interior in it and I just needed to be able to see my wallet. So I figured, well, I'll get a bright red bag, 
or a bright red wallet and I'll be able to see it inside the bag. What I forgot is that the black is going to transfer onto my red. And so you may be able to see here, I'll fill it up there, is that this part right here is nice cherry red and the rest of the wallet has darkened from the color transfer. It also scratches very easily. I think I had a hairbrush in my uh, handbag which scratched this and then it peels on the side too. So this is a particularly delicate material. So even though it is absolutely beautiful, I know that some of these uh, colors are just like jewels that gleam in the sunlight and they're gorgeous. But if you're someone who does not uh, really want to take care of or baby your bags excessively, then this probably isn't the best material for you. I've seen horror stories on YouTube where people have accidentally put their bag next to a magazine and the magazine page literally adhered onto the surface of their bag and left the imprint of the picture on their bag and they were unable to get it off. So this is something um, to be very aware of, that something like this is extremely delicate. And finally, if you are um, looking into something that has any sort of embellishment and the Dionysus line from Gucci comes to mind, they have a lot of bags that have um, painting, studs, crystals, embroidery. Um, I just saw recently that they're doing uh, baseball teams you can buy a Dionysus bag with a New York Yankees emblem on it. Um, I've seen them with feathers and all sorts of embroidery and stuff. And anything that is added onto the surface of the bag is going to be um, a risk factor. Uh, studs can fall off, crystals can fall off, um, embroidery can pull, uh, feathers can break, they can also bleed, the color from the feathers will bleed onto your bag if it gets wet, and then if it's painted with any sort of design, that can rub off as well. So those are all things to keep in mind when you're buying a colorful bag because they can be a little bit more delicate than your standard black brown bags. So uh, those are the things to consider, and uh, hopefully, um, if you take those into consideration, you might be able um, to buy a bag that you'll have very successful uh, time with and, and it'll really work for you. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, I have a little story for you, and this is a story about me and how I did not follow my own advice. And it has to do with this bag right here, which is a Ted Baker bag. So um, I bought this in February or March uh, a couple years ago. It was winter, I was sick to death of winter. I saw it in a store window. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. It reminded me of spring and summer. I walked into the store and I bought it on the spot. So it was very much an impulse buy. And um, I didn't really think much about it. I figured I'd put it aside until the warm weather came. And then when the warm weather came, I had a picture in my head I was gonna be wearing it with white jeans and it was gonna be cool and fresh and everything. And I did wear it with white jeans, but really that was about it because in reality, when the warm weather comes around, I like to dress in prints and patterns, and just about everything I pulled out of my wardrobe clashed with this bag. Now, the back of the bag is just a simple trellis design here, but it still clashes a little bit. Even with this blouse that I'm wearing here, I would never pair these two together. Uh, I just think that it just doesn't go together very well. So this was a bag that, um, while it looks really pretty, it didn't really go with a whole lot in my wardrobe. Also, the style of the bag isn't quite right. Now, if you look at it, it looks like a big tote with a top handle that you can put over your shoulder, and it all sounds perfect, but the reality is that it's not as roomy as you would think because of all these compartments. So there's a lot of compartments in this bag. There's a skinny compartment here and here, and then there's a zipper compartment right in the middle, and all those compartments take away from the actual roominess of the bag. So I found that when I was stuffing it full of my makeup bag and my wallet and my big thick sunglass case, I would put something in and then I would put something on top of it and then I couldn't find it and I would have to pull one thing out in order to get the other thing out. And so overall, it just didn't function for me because there was just too much space taken up with all of these compartments. And like I said, I'm someone who prefers a big open space. So these compartments were bothersome and annoying for me and it didn't really work. Plus the bag is really big, so I felt like for the size of it, I should be able to just stuff everything in there, and I really couldn't do that. Um, 
the thing I did get right with this bag it was the price. So it's a Ted Baker bag and the price point was only about $300. So for me, $300 was not a big deal. Um, I figured, well, you know, I kind of made a mistake. It wasn't the perfect bag for me and it's not really a bag that's gonna function for me. However, for $300, I feel like, well, I could I could just brush it off. It, it's no big deal. If it had been something like $3,000, then I probably would have ended up selling it and I certainly would have sold it at a loss. So. Um, overall, um, I have to say that it was not a successful addition to my collection. The bright side, though, or the silver lining, is that it looks really, really pretty on my shelf. And so every time I walk by my shelf and see this bag, it makes me smile. It kind of looks like a, a painting almost with this pretty flower here and the trellis design. So, so that's a bright side. So that at least I don't feel like I wasted $300 completely. I can look at it and I can admire how pretty it is and maybe from time to time I might take it out to use it, but uh, it definitely was not a successful purchase for me. So uh, that is my story with colorful bags. I hope uh, this video was helpful for you. And if it was, please, uh, as usual, you know, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, like the bell or all of that stuff there. I really do appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching and uh, I will see you again very, very soon. So thanks. Take care.